live to talk more about this. And I do want to begin with what the president said there, Larry. This is not enough. Do you sense that this was the judicial system on trial? And what does that mean moving forward, do you think? You know, uh, Ron, first of all, good morning, Ron and Jenny. The, the, the statement as far as the judicial system, and not just the judicial, judicial system, but we as Americans were on trial. Uh, as far as how we saw our fellow Americans in situations like this. So many times before uh, we've had cases like this and police officers have been acquitted. And I think the last case in Minneapolis, the officer was acquitted. Larry, there's been a lot of discussion, as there always is in a case like this, people use the word justice. And, and then yesterday, the focus seemed to shift to the word Accountability. I, I, I believe that words matter, and I believe that the way that we explain things really does matter. Um, in, in your sense, what, what happened yesterday, is it justice, is it accountability, is it something else, and, and explain where you're at with that. It's, it's actually both. And so, you know, speaking from a lawyer and then also speaking from an African-American male, uh, so many times you, you see these situations and you ask yourself, what about me? What about my family? Do they get justice? On the other side, uh, the conviction shows that there is accountability for these actions. And so it puts other officers and police departments on notice that, you know, you can and will be held accountable for things like this. You mentioned, Larry, the citizen involvement, and we saw the people who stood around and wanted to act and, and pleaded with that officer to back off of George Floyd as it was happening. We've seen photos of them. Uh, an attorney for the prosecution described them as a bouquet of humanity and that they represented a cross-section of people in this country who didn't want that to happen, but they felt helpless to stop it. And it was a 17-year-old young woman who recorded that video that became the evidence, you could argue, um, that led to this conviction. Citizens displaying, citizens acting in that way, recording police officers as they're in action, Will that help in leading to accountability, or is this much deeper than that? It, it will help, and it, it has become a little bit deeper in the fact that some states now are looking to pass legislation to prevent the filming of officers, mm -hmm. uh, stating that it is interfering with officers uh, doing their job. But without these, these videos, without this evidence, uh, a large part or part of America, um, you know, discounted what actually took place. And so these, these videos are very much needed. So how do we, let's talk about with regard to, it's just, just such a tough thing to balance, Larry, because we, we talk about, okay, so this girl, teenager, 17-year-old, what she did that day um, was such a large part of the outcome here. It's very intimidating for people out in the world. You know, uh, often when something like this is happening, a police officer is telling people, hey, stop it, knock it off, don't record this. Like, stop. You know, leave us alone, let us do our jobs. And people who have been brought up to respect the law and respect police officers say, oh my gosh, absolutely, of course, let me step back and let you do your job. But now we see, is that the right decision? You know, you know, um, it's, a, it's a tough thing. What do we educate our children on? Um, because when it comes to respect of the law and re respect of um, police officers, I don't know, I don't know where, how we guide them to behave appropriately out in the world, but also still just keep a sharp mind and wit to be looking out for what could be wrong. And you bring up an interesting point, and a couple of people involved in this case have talked about it. The Attorney General uh, for Minneapolis stated that no one is above or below the law, and we as citizens are part of that community, and we have a duty to actually expose those things that go against or contradict um, humanity. And so, you know, what he stated and the nonprofit organization Police the Truth uh, is an organization that actually protects officers for coming up and stepping up and doing the right thing. Uh, you've seen recently in New York where the female officer who stopped an incident that could have been the, the first or the next George Floyd um, received her pension and was told that she did the right thing by intervening. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And so I think we're seeing a shift in this country in which people are inter- intervening on those things that we all know to be wrong. I think it's important, Larry, that we're very explicit here that the actions of Derek Chauvin do, certainly do not represent the actions of all police officers oh, gosh, or the no. sentiment of all police officers. And on that note, I want to share this with you because I think it's a it's an important and interesting perspective. Pete Schulte, who's a local attorney, also a police officer, tweeted this, and I want to read it and share it with you. As a lawyer and police officer, I strive every day to make our justice system fair and equitable for all citizens, regardless of race. It's time for that to be the rule, not the exception for all law enforcement. Justice was served today in the George Floyd trial. Change is coming. That's a sentiment from a police officer who is also a lawyer, so perhaps he brings an interesting perspective in that regard. Do you think his sentiment is a reflection of the majority of police departments across this country, and they will take this to heart and root out the systematic racism from the inside out? Ron, I I think that's going to be a a slow change. I mean, you got to realize that some of these officers are career officers who uh, grew up in the police departments just like Show. And so we're starting to see a systematic change. I I know uh, Pete personally and himself and other individuals involved in law enforcement are needed to make those type of changes. One of the greatest uh, things I've ever seen when I was a prosecutor was to watch a a chief of mine um, actually carry out justice and it contradict the blue wall. And we need more individuals like that to step up and say, this isn't right. We must do the right thing. And, you know, it's just important that we continue this momentum. But I don't think it's going to happen overnight. Yeah. Can can you kind of explain just from the legal perspective where we go from here in the trial? We know that it's not until June that we hear, you know, get to the sentencing phase. What happens between now and then? And what do you think will happen come June? Uh, I, I think right now you have a, a several appellate attorneys who are working on uh, finding reasons why uh, this conviction should be overturned. Mm-hmm. Uh, there will also be both on the prosecution side and on the defense side a, a gathering of the information that was presented at trial uh, so that they can reintroduce uh, evidence before the judge to try to get a, either a downward departure or a uh, the lowest minimum sentence that they can based on the sentencing guidelines of Minnesota. So Larry, as the wheels of justice then continue to turn in this case and we learn more about the sentencing coming up, I wanna end with what we started with and that is this idea of this verdict yesterday was bigger than the case itself. It speaks to a larger issue. When it comes to reforming policy and eradicating systematic racism, that has been part of your firm's mission, not just representing each client individually for their best outcome, but rather to speak to the larger issue of how we put in place policy. Where does that start? Does it start on the state level? You spoke to state legislation about limiting the ability to record police officers. There could be legislation on the state level that also puts into place new policing reform. Where does it start? How do we start from the bottom up? It it, it starts with, with, with the people, right? Uh, we have to, as citizens, have to encourage our elected officials locally to do more to change things that we see. Several states have already passed uh, forms of George, the George Floyd bill, mm-hmm. uh, and where they actually have police officers that will be financially accountable for situations like this, for at least a portion of those financial damages. And so then it carries up to our, our federal our government. We need the Senate to pass the George Floyd bill uh, so that President Biden can sign off on it and give the Attorney General and others uh, the tools that they need to ensure that all uh, have the ability to to live free of, of harm and and such such horrific acts. Larry Taylor, thank you for your insight. Thank you thank for joining you. us. We really do appreciate it. Larry Taylor is a partner with the Cochrane Law Firm. You can Read more about Larry and his work in the community. Again, on a larger scale, uh, Larry is tackling these issues. CochranFirm.com. He's also on Twitter.